far from an anus horribilis. This was a vintage 12 months for the Queen and her family. Alex Lloyd reviews the highlights of 2018 for the House of Windsor. They might live in a palace but the royals are just like any other family, with their fair share of sickness, scandal and sorrow over the years. But while 1992 was one the Queen would famously rather forget, 2018 has proved to be a bumper year for her brood, filled with births marriages and milestones. Here are some of the most noteworthy moments. The mask slips. After 22 years of negotiations, the BBC secured a television coup in January when the Queen gave a rare interview to Alastair Bruce to share her personal memories of her 1953 investiture for documentary The Coronation. She smiled as she was reunited with her hefty coronation regalia for the first time in 65 years and dropped her guard when she revealed her maternal displeasure at young Prince Charles and Princess Anne playing hide-and-seek under her train. Other no-nonsense insights included her recollection of traveling in the four-ton gold state coach as horrible and how her father, King George VI, made her write a review of his own coronation when she was 11. It was a televisual triumph and reminded us that the somewhat serious sovereign most definitely has a human side. Three is the magic number. Prince William joked that he had thrice the worry now after the birth of his third child, Louis Arthur Charles, at 11.01m on April 23, weighing 8 pounds 7 ounces. But he was all smiles later that day as he appeared with the Duchess of Cambridge and their baby on the steps of the Lindo Wing at London St. Mary's Hospital before heading home to Kensington Palace. In a nod to the fifth in line to the throne St. George's Day arrival, Catherine glowed in a patriotic red Jenny Packham dress with a white collar. Fashion observers were quick to spot that the moment mirrored the time Diana introduced newborn Prince Harry to the British public in 1984 in a long red dress. The new royal's name was chosen to honor his paternal great-great-great-uncle Lord Mountbatten as well as his grandfather with his moniker officially conferred at his private christening at the Chapel Royal of St. James's Palace in July. Another American joins the family. If the engagement was last year's fairy tale, the crisis-laden build-up to Harry and Meghan's May 19 nuptials felt like the plot of one of the U.S. dramas the former actress used to star in. The icing on the wedding cake came when the bride's father Thomas Markle was caught posing for fake photos with a paparazzi photographer before needing emergency heart surgery in Mexico. But when the wedding arrived, it was all we dreamed of, with a star-studded congregation that included no less than Oprah, Idris Elba and both of Harry's ex-girlfriends. Prince Charles stepped into the breach to walk as Givenchy clad Meghan down the aisle of St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle while gospel singers the Kingdom Choir almost stole the show with their rendition of Stand By Me and everyone got the giggles during the fifth wall sermon by U.S. preacher Michael Curry. An estimated 18 million British people tuned in, with 100,000 lining the streets of Windsor to wish the new Duke and Duchess of Sussex well. While there were many heartfelt moments, who could forget Prince Harry, 34, wiping away a tear as they played his late mother's favorite hymn, Guide Me. O oh thou great redeemer! Joy after loss for the Tyndalls. After the heartache of two miscarriages, Zara Tyndall and her husband Mike were blessed with a second daughter on June 18. Lena Elizabeth arrived weighing 9 pounds 3 ounces, her middle name a tribute to her regal great-grandmother, after a birth which her former England rugby player father confessed was difficult. In September, Zara, 37, had to hold back tears during an interview with BBC Breakfast presenter Sally Nugent when she revealed the pain of grieving in public. Her first miscarriage happened just a month after the pregnancy had been publicly announced in 2016, while the second had been private. Normally it's just your family and friends, but unfortunately everyone knew about it, she said. I had so many letters saying I'm so sorry, we've been through the same thing which was incredible and thank you to all those people. Royal Wedding, the reboot. When Princess Eugenie and her beau Jack Bruxpank chose to copy her cousin and marry at Windsor Castle on October 12th, you couldn't help feeling the day would be a disappointment in comparison to the sparkle of Markle. But the resulting ceremony was a heartwarming affair, with a green-clad Fergie looking every inch the emotional mother of the bride while Prince Philip put aside his dislike of his former daughter-in-law to attend. The day was traditional with a twist and included a ban on plastics, 
a funfair and Robbie Williams's daughter Teddy as a bridesmaid. The dress was an off-the-shoulder white gown by Peter Pilato with a low back to allow the 28-year-old princess to display the scar she sports from back surgery when she was 12. The spare gets an air. When the Duchess of Sussex attended Eugenie and Jack sweating in a noticeable loose navy jacket, speculation was feverish that yet another royal bun was in the oven. Three days later, the couple confirmed the news as they arrived in Sydney for an official 16-day tour of Australia and New Zealand. The pregnancy raised excitement about the visit to another level, with huge crowds greeting the pair while they donned traditional Maori outfits watched the Invictus games and went barefoot with surfers on the beach. Meghan showed she was more than up to her royal duties by giving a dignified speech about the female vote in New Zealand, while Harry let everyone from schoolchildren to 98-year-old Daphne Dunn have a stroke of his ginger beard. William shares his struggles. Diana's boys continued fighting the stigma around mental health issues this year, with the Duke of Cambridge, below opening up about the emotional anguish he felt while working as a search and rescue helicopter pilot. I took a lot of it home with me, he confessed during the launch of Head Together's Mental Health at Work initiative in September. If you see sad things every day, you think all life is like that. Last month, he told a conference about one traumatic incident involving a child which he struggled to deal with. After I had my own children. I think the relation between the job and the personal life was what really took me over the edge, and I started feeling things that I had never felt before," he admitted. His honesty was praised by bereaved mum Sarah Lee, whose teenage son drowned in 2017 despite efforts by the Prince and his East Anglia Air Ambulance crew to save him. Charles turns 70. The dog days are over. The year was not without its sadness for the Queen who said goodbye to her last corgi in October. Whisper had been adopted in 2016 after the death of his owner, a former Sandringham gamekeeper. The animal-loving monarch has been synonymous with the dogs since her childhood and has owned more than 30 of the animals during her reign, many direct descendants of her first dog Susan. But the Queen decided to stop breeding them in 2015 over fears she might trip on one and hurt herself. She was also anxious not to leave any behind after her death. With Whisper's passing, she only has two Dorges, a Das Kuntkurgi crossbreed, called Vulcan and Candy. The heir to the throne's evolution from meddling prince to respected king to be continued apace with his 70th birthday celebrations in November with the Prince of Wales insisting during a TV interview that he would have to operate within constitutional parameters as sovereign. The Windsors were keen to bestow their praises on the birthday boy, with his sons painting him as a loving father, while eldest grandson George larked about on his knee in the official photo. Charles's wife Camilla was the surprise star of a BBC documentary Prince, Son and Heir, stating that he was an exceptional and kind man. His mother also paid touching tribute to her son during a glitzy banquet at Buckingham Palace. Philip and I have seen Charles become a champion of conservation and the arts, a great charitable leader, a dedicated and respected heir to the throne to stand comparison with any in history, and a wonderful father, she said during a toast. Most of all, sustained by his wife Camilla, he is his own man, passionate and creative.